Right, in this question here, there's three parts. The first part is a triple integration, and parts two and three involve differentiation of vectors. Well, the first part is just a simple triple integration over a sphere. Spheres, radius one, centred the origin. Nothing tricky there. Just evaluating this density function throughout that volume. So here it is then. Sphere centred the origin, radius one, and rho, unfortunately, the same as that variable in spherical coordinates for the density function. So the mass will be evaluate that density function throughout the volume. And that density function being z to the four. Right. Now, it's not Cartesian coordinates in this case. It's much easier in spherical coordinates. So in spherical coordinates, the components would be x would be rho, unfortunately again, sine phi cos theta, y is rho sine phi sine theta, and z is rho cos phi. Then that volume element, that volume element is going to be rho squared sine phi and then d rho d phi d theta. Right, popping it in here then, what have we got? Well, <coughs> for this part we're going to need to work out exactly what the limits are, right? So it's a sphere centered the origin radius one. So that means rho is going to go from zero to one. Right, phi, starting at the top, I'm going to go halfway around and sweep out a semicircle. So that's going to go from zero to pi. And then that semicircle is going to sweep all the way around once, zero to two pi. Z, that's rho cos, so it'll be rho cos phi to the power four, and then pop in this long volume element. So that's it in its nested form just now, right? Spread out the iteration. So for the theta, it's just that. For the phi, it's going to be cos to the four sine theta, d theta, goes out of the road. And for the phi, it's going to be a power four and two, that's power six, zero. Right, evaluating that, that's just going to go back up to theta, zero to two pi. Now that's a beta function. Just consider if it works or not. Sine over the pi region, sine will stay positive and cos to the four will stay positive. So that means it's the same in both halves. So it's just going to be two lots from zero to pi upon two. So two beta functions. So I've got two times down to three, that's a one. Add them, that's five, then three, then one. Then the row, that goes up to seven divided by seven from zero to one. Quick evaluation, that'll be two pi. They'll cancel, that'll be two fifths, and that's a seventh. Multiplying it out, four pi upon 35. And that's it. Right, question two, directional derivative of that. Now that's a scalar function, which has got a different value throughout three-dimensional space. So what you can do is at any particular point, you could find the rate of change in each of the three directions, which will give you a vector then. That would be the gradient of it. So find that gradient at 512, and then this says how much of that lies in the same direction as four negative one eight. So that would be the scalar product. Right, so it's find the directional derivative of this function at this point in the direction of that vector. Right, well, first of all, that's a coordinate and that's a vector, so I've used the round brackets here for the coordinates and the angle brackets for the vector. And another thing is, use a function, so give it a name so you can prefer to. Right now, that function is obviously going to vary in space, and at that point, it's going to be varying by a certain amount which can be represented as a vector at that point, and that would be the grad of that function. And I want to know how much of it lies in the direction of n. So that would be like the scalar product of it then, so the scalar product of that with n. But it's the rate of change, and the rate of change means the amount that it changes for each unit along the way. So I really want to find the grad of that dot the unit vector. Stop, back to this. Getting the grad of that. So the grad of phi, the grad of that scalar function would be differentiate it with respect to each of the directions. How much does it change in each direction? So I'll carry out the differentiations then. So for the first one, with respect to x, that will just be y squared z. With respect to y, it's going to be 2xyz and the 6 at the end. And with respect to z, that'll just be xy squared. Now, that's changes for different points in space. At that particular point, at 5, 1, 2, simply feed those coordinates into the expression to find the exact nature of the vector at that point. So I'll put that in. That's going to be 1 squared times 2, and then 2 times 5 times that, plus a 6. And for the last one, it's going to be 5 times 1 squared. So what's that? Well, that's just going to be 2. That's below 26, and that's 5. So that's exactly the vector that lies at that point. So that's the grad of phi. Now that's to be a unit vector. So the length of n 
is given by its components here, squaring them. So that would then be, I've got the square root of 16 and 1 and 64. Handily, that's 81, so that's exactly 9. Good. So that means that the unit vector, just use that notation there, is going to be a ninth of the 4, negative 1, 8. Right, now <coughs> we can do it. Now we can find the amount that varies in that direction. So it's going to be the gradify dot the unit vector. So that's going to be 2, 26, 5 times 4, negative 1, 8, and put the fraction at the front there. So it's going to be a 1 ninth of, and now it's just the scalar product. So multiplying the corresponding components, 8 minus 26 and 40, so that comes to a ninth of, that adds up to 22. So that becomes, no, 22 upon 9, not 29. Right, part 3. Now, part 3 has actually got three parts. There's A and B, which you've just got to prove some Dell Nabla expressions, and then use them together with that given product rule for Dell Nabla, you have to evaluate the expression at the bottom. There. So, Show that grad r to the n is in fact this. Now r is the position vector x, y, z, and r is the length of that vector, so grad. So what the grad of r to the n, that means the partial derivative of r to the n in each of the different directions, x, y, and z, creating that vector. Now r is the length of that, so r squared will be x squared plus y squared plus z squared. I want the partial by x, so that will be 2r times its derivative with respect to x, and the other side gives 2x. So partial i by r by x will be x over r. Now I actually wanted the partial derivative of r to the n by x. Well that will be the same outside n r to the n minus 1. Inside function partial r by partial x. But I've got that part already. That's x over r. And r has been knock one off of that power. So r to the n minus 2 x. That's that part. Now they all look the same. So by symmetry it could be any of them, so partial r to the n by y will be the same thing with a y, and partial r to the n by z will be the same thing except with a z. So, feed it into that expression then. You've got, that'll be n with an x, the same thing with a y, and the same thing with a z. Now, there's a common multiple there, so take that scalar out of it, and then I've got x, y, z, which is just what r was to begin with. So there's the expression that was required to be demonstrated. Right. Whoosh. Right, so this next part here, prove this expression is equal to zero. Right, well, we've got the vector product there, so we'll have to do the cross product of that. So that'll be the determinant of this matrix involving i, j, k, the components of a and the components of r. So that'll be the minor of i minus the minor of j plus the minor of k. Those minors being the determinant of the submatrix left over. So for j, the submatrix would be that, taking me that, multiplying those two together. And for k, there's the submatrix, so it's a1y minus a2x. Right, now, div. So that's really div dot the vector. So div dot a cross r means d by dx of the first component, d by dy, Oops, we've got d by dy, that's it, of the second component, and partial by partial z of the third component. There's the components 1, 2, and 3 going in. Right, so differentiating each of these components then. So the first component's got no x's in it, so that's 0. The next component's got no y's in it, so that's 0. And that component's got no z's in it. So that means the whole expression, div of that, does in fact equal 0. Right, now that would be the end of it. But I'll know I'll need this expression in the next part. So just to, no, so reversing that rather than doing subtraction and then taking a note of that for later. Right. Now, once again, clear this board. Right, now, final part. I have to use this identity given to prove this expression. So we've got that identity and this expression which has got scalars and vectors in it. Right, so for the first part then, replacing the parts r to the 4 Div, that's the vector part, scalar part, vector part, is going to be the vector next, that's a cross r dot the scalar part, grad of that. Now, seen this before, that part there was back in part b. So from part b, I know that div of a cross r can be zero. And that was back in part a. From part a, the grad of r to the n was n r to the n minus 2 r. Right, feeding that in then. 
That means that this first bit then is just going to go because it's going to be r to the 4 times 0. And the second part will be that cross product time dot rather n r to the n minus 2, which is just a scalar, r. Right, that's gone. So this part is going to be take that to the front and it's going to be r dot. So there's our triple product. Now you could answer that quite quickly if you just think of the cross product. Because if you take the cross product being that, it produces a perpendicular vector. And obviously that perpendicular vector is perpendicular to the r, which means that that should come to zero for the scalar product. However, it did say show with clear working. So I don't know if that would count. Maybe we'll have to do that part then the component way, by putting down the components of r and d cross r. So there they're there. Well, r was just x, y, z. And of course, the components of a cross r, here's the one I prepared earlier, is this set of three cumbersome parts from those minors. Right, so, scalar product. So it'll be x times that, y times that, z times that. So it's x times all of that, and y times all of the second component, and z times all of that third component. Now is the best big multiplication of which of the parts out. So there's minus a3xy, and that'll be a3xy, and then minus a1yz, plus a1yz, and finally minus that. And they'll cancel out. Those two go, those two go, and the first two go. All comes to zero, which was required to be proved. That means that div of r to the n a cross r does in fact equal zero. And that's it finished.